Okay, this is lesson 11.1 .1 on basic probability. Let's look at some definitions here. The probability experiment is an action that has varying results. Okay, Outcomes are the possible results. Sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. Okay, So we have that information to help us with the next part. Determining the sample space. Okay. If we look at example one, if we're going to flip a coin, we need to think what are the possible, what's our sample space? So that, remember that is the all possible outcomes. Well, we know for a coin, the sample space is going to either be heads or tails. Okay, so we know there are two possible um, possibilities. So our sample space is two. Letter B. If we have a six-sided die, our sample space, we know we can roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So we have a sample space of six. Letter C, we're going to roll two six-sided die. So let's take a look at possible scenarios for that. Okay, we know that we can roll one and one, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six. And the same for two, two and one, two and two, okay, um, and going all the way through. Remember, you have two dies, so you could have all these possibilities. Each die could be different. Okay, so we would say we'd have 36 as our sample space. Letter D, flipping a coin and rolling a six-sided die. So let's look at our scenarios. We could have a head heads in one, tails in one, heads in two, tails in two, and so forth. Okay, heads and tails with each number. So we know that our sample space in this case would be 12. Okay, so it's important to find your sample space before um, doing any probability. Let's look at the next page. Theoretical probability. And what is an event? It's an any particular subset of a sample space. Okay, A simple event is a, a single outcome of an experiment. Compound event is an event that consists of two or more simple events. And the probability of an event is a measure of the likelihood that the event will occur. Probability is always a number between 0 and 1 that can be written as a fraction, decimal, or percent. Okay. The probability of an event, we have a formula. We would say the number of outcome, uh, outcomes in the event divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So let's look at some examples. Example two, letter A, we have roll five with a die. Okay. So I'm going to say the probability of 5, and it's the number of outcomes in the event. Okay, so I know that there's only one side of the die that is 5, so it would be 1, divided by the sample space, which we know that would be 6. There's 6 sides. Okay, so we write, wrote it as a fraction, and then we can write it as a decimal, and even as a percent. Okay, letter B roll at least two with a die. So we know that P at least two is what we're is what we're trying to find here, the probability of this event. Okay. And we know that our numerator would be five, right? Because we would know that the only um, side that would not work would be one. So there's five possibilities out of the six sides. So that would be our Oops, let's do our squiggly lines for approximate. And then our percent. So an 83% chance that could happen. Letter C, roll a sum of 10 with two dice. Okay, so I'm just going to put P of 10, so I'm not writing this all out. And we know that um, if we want a sum of 10, let's think about some of our choices. We have 6 and 4. Then we have 5 and 5, 
and then four and six. We know that our numerator would be three for the three possibilities divided by our sample space. And if you remember from our first page, we said when we're rolling two um, six-sided die, we have 36. So three out of 36, which is 1 12th, which will then give me my decimal and my percent. Okay, and usually when we talk about things like uh, even with the weather, what's percent chance of rain, a lot of times we um, like it in percentage because it helps us relate it um, to how we think. Okay, let's look at the next page. Example three, there are four true false questions on the assessment. What is the probability that you get exactly three correct? Okay, so we're looking at um, we really want to know this guy right here. Three correct, okay? And we're going to create, the, we need to know our sample space, so we're going to create the scenarios. We're going to use C for correct and I for incorrect. So if we have zero correct, that means we have four incorrect. That's one scenario. If we have one correct and we have three incorrect, um, if you had number one correct, two, three, and four would be incorrect and so forth. So there's four different outcomes for that. For two correct, then you'd have to have two incorrect, and these are the scenarios. And we're looking for three correct, and then this will be the scenario for incorrect. And then if we had four correct, then that would be one scenario. Okay, so we can see. that, oops, sorry, my total outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that's my sample space. And my favorable outcomes, which is the three um, correct, which is what I was looking for, would be four. So I'm going to do four over 16, right? So that's my, um, for exactly three correct, four out of 16, which gives me one fourth, which means I have a 25% chance of that happening. Okay. Let's look at a new definition here of complement of an event. The sum of the probabilities of all outcomes of a sample space is one. Therefore, you can find the probability of an event not occurring. So here would be our formula. If we have the probability of an event not occurring, we would take 1 minus the probability of the event occurring. So example 4, use the scenario in example 3, or just above, to answer the following. The probability that you do not get exactly 3 correct. All right, so we would just take, remember we said we um, have a 25% chance so we could do 1 minus 1 fourth, which we is 3 fourths, which gives us 75% chance. All right, one more page. Experimental probability. Experimental probability cases where you observe and record outcomes. Repeated. Okay, repeated trials of a probability experiment. Trials are the number of times the probability experiment is performed. All right, we have a new formula for this. The number of times event E has occurred and the number of independent trials has occurred. So let's look at example five. We have a spinner. How many times was the spinner spun? Well, we can see that it was spun 20 times. If we add all of these together. So using that, we can find the experimental probability of each. So we want to know P of black. Well, black is 4, so we would say it's 4 over the, out of the 20 times we spun. So that gives us 1 fifth, which is 20%. Letter B, the probability of dots, we can say is 8 out of 20, which is 2 fifths, and 40%. Okay, so dots 
so far is definitely the highest, 4853. We can see from that number it should be, and by our chances are 40% that it would be dots. So let's leave our table. P of stripes, we would have 5 out of 20 to give us 1 fourth, which is 25% chance. Letter D, P of white, is 3 out of 20, which is 15%. Do any of these match the theoretical probability? All right, so theoretical probability, if we have four different um, spaces here, we know that any single one of them would be one fourth. So which one would match that? It would be the stripes. So we would say yes, the stripes match theoretical probability. So we can compare that, that yes, we have a one in four chance of rolling or spinning um, stripes. Okay, this is the trial, so it didn't statistically come out perfect, but stripes um, did in our scenario. And that is lesson 11.1.